The producers of Shiny Happy People, which was a hit piece docuseries on Amazon Prime, leaned heavily on the popularity and interest of the Duggar family in the public, and their prize interview for this docuseries was clearly that of Jill Duggar Dillard, the fourth born child in the Duggar family. Jill had written a book that was going to be coming out in the next few months after Shiny Happy People was released. She said she wanted to do this interview so she could tell what was going on in her life rather than the tabloids making things up. I have to say that seems like a reasonable consideration, but it doesn't seem like a wise choice to do it with a team that has a tabloid type mindset in the first place, which shiny happy people clearly did have. In a video I posted on my other channel, The Mommy Answer Lady, I mistakenly mixed up Ginger and Jill in my commentary. At that time, I had seen Shiny Happy People a couple weeks earlier. I was trying to get it off my mind by addressing it because it so bothered me. And in the meantime, had seen several interviews with Ginger. This made me think she was actually the woman in Shiny Happy People, but clearly that wasn't the case. I was just going to post that video and move on, but I couldn't move on. I didn't change the video after I realized my mistake because the point of the video wasn't about which of these women had spoken out in Shiny Happy People. It was about whether we should believe everything Shiny Happy People says and we should recognize they have an agenda going on and are creating and presenting a skewed view of the facts. That was the point and it was made whether it was Jill or Ginger Duggar involved in the production. That didn't really matter. Since I did that video, I have done a ton of research into this whole thing and found how much the producers hid from the public. Some of it they had to know, but some of it I think they just took on face value from those they interviewed without looking into it at all. Jill lays out the beginnings of the Duggar family, how her parents met, and the philosophy of having a lot of children, which her parents believed in wholeheartedly. During the interview, she mentions that her grandparents on either side did not agree with this philosophy. My parents believed you should have as many kids as you're capable of having until your body tells you to stop. My grandparents, neither one on either side, agreed with my parents having a million kids. I find that very interesting. One of the main points in her book, Counting the Cost, and in her sister Ginger's book, Free Indeed, is that IBLP and Gother taught that children are supposed to obey their parents even after they're married. That is stated very plainly in their books. Like all good IBLP parents, mom and pops believed their adult children, even those of us who were married and starting to have families of their own, were still under their parental authority. Gothard invented a system whereby grown children still have to listen to their parents and obey their counsel. He maintained the authority of parents even after marriage vows. This concept is alluded to in Shiny Happy People as well during Jill's interview. My grandparents, neither one on either side, agreed with my parents having a million kids. They were like concerned about my mom's health and like they would always say, oh, is this your last one? Looky here, Grandpa, this is your new grandbaby. This is Jordan Grace Micaiah Duggar. Yeah. They both claim that this is an IBLP teaching and that Bill Gother taught that grown children are to obey their parents and when they are married, they are to continue to do so. Yet here in Shiny Happy People, Jill says her grandparents did not agree with her parents and her parents did what they believed they should do, regardless of their counsel against it. Something isn't right here. This is a blaring contradiction. Did Jim, Bob, and Michelle believe that they were supposed to obey their parents after they got married? Did IBLP teach this as a principle or not? According to these two women, it was a principle that was taught and it caused all kinds of problems in their own marriages until they realized it was a false teaching. So I wanted to look into this concept. Was this taught in IBLP? Did Bill Gother teach this? And how would that work anyway? What if one set of parents thought one thing and the other thought something else? How could the grown children that were married obey them if this was the case? It didn't make sense to me at all. So I looked into it and this is what I found. Now marriage in God's eyes is when both sets of parents give their full agreement, and this is the ideal, 
both sets of parents give their, their agreement, and at that time, in the marriage, then both sides exalt the fellow to be in this particular position, where he is now under counsel. He no longer is under chain of command. He's directly under God. He's now a new structure of protection and authority. But he's to be under counsel of father-in-law and mother-in-law and father and mother. In fact, as long as he lives, we're told in Scripture, Proverbs, forsake not the counsel of your father and your mother when they are old. Well, if you're not to forsake the counsel of your father and mother when they are old, it means you're getting older too. Now, they then bring the girl up to this level where she's under, she's under the protection and the authority of her husband, but she's also should be open to the counsel and urge him to get counsel from her parents and his parents. All get the counsel, get as much counsel as you can. In this clip, it makes rather clear that grown children are not obligated to obey their parents. They are wise to seek their counsel. They become their own family and together make their own decisions. That's a whole lot different than obeying your parents. Listening to their counsel and making your own decision about whether to heed it or not is not the same as obeying them. Yet this idea of grown children obeying their parents after marriage is pushed as a real concept that is taught by Gothard and IBLP, but it clearly isn't true. And as I said, both Jill and Ginger Duggar mistakenly trumpet this theme heavily in their books. In fact, in the upcoming docuseries Shiny Slander, you will see my interview with Bill Gothard where I ask him this specific question. He never taught that married children were in any way obligated to obey their parents. In fact, shocker, he also did not claim that women are supposed to be under the control of their fathers until marriage. In two emails, Gother expressed this, There is a big difference in a daughter staying under her father's protection until she is married and a daughter staying under the control of her father. I have never advocated that a daughter should be controlled by her father when she is older. Tuesday and Wednesday evenings of the basic seminar, I clearly explain that we are to honor our authorities, but not always obey them. Those who claim that I teach that sons and daughters are always to obey their parents are willfully misrepresenting what I teach. I state that we are not to have blind obedience. The Duggar girls are not the only ones that get this concept wrong. There are others who say this is a concept that was taught when it was not. Even after my wife and I were married, one thing we struggled with was that concept of children being under the authority of their parents. Mm -hmm. The exit of that, uh, how you exit that when you get married is not clear defined in IBLP. And I think a lot of times it's, uh, it's expected to continue. There are many others saying these things about IBLP teachings that I have found are just not true. I have to say when I see interviews with Ginger Duggar, I think she is very sincere. That's why I keep clarifying my comments by using the word mistakenly. I believe she believes what she is saying. I do not believe she is being dishonest in any way, but she is mistaken. What she believes Bill Gothard and IBLP taught and what was actually taught are two different things. As far as Jill goes, I believe she's also being honest, but I also think she has some deep seated resentments that she's attempting to heal and going about it in the wrong way, in my opinion, by putting her father down in public and unwittingly misrepresenting what Gothard and IBLP taught. But I think both these ladies are good people and trying to manage their fame and influence as best they can with some of the emotional issues they have had to face being in the public since childhood. What Ginger should do, in my view, as a Christian, is sit down with Mr. Gothard and talk out the teachings that are in question. It's not right, in my opinion, to go out on a public campaign to discredit him without sitting down to discuss her grievances and point out things she believes are unbiblical that he allegedly teaches. Then after that discussion, if she feels it necessary to warn people about him and his teachings, fine, do it. But until she sits down and clarifies these things, it's wrong to do that. She has convinced many people that IBLP and Gothard teach things that they do not teach. Not just the idea that children are to obey their parents even after they marry, and that fathers are to control their grown daughters, but another concept she says that Gothard teaches is that people should clean up their mess before coming to Jesus. 
But my parents like sought to point us kids to Jesus as the answer and never said it was about works. Um, but although Bill Gothard's teaching, he would he would say, like he said in one of his seminars, before you come to Jesus, you need to clean up this mess. So do these steps and then come to Jesus, which is just like I could not, I could not believe what I heard. That's another thing that's not true. I looked and looked through the seminar videos. I did not find this anywhere. I asked others who are IBLP followers, and they all denied they ever heard such a teaching come from IBLP or Gothard. I even emailed Mr. Gothard to ask if he ever taught that concept. Here was his response. I never said we must clean up our act before coming to Christ. That would result in a works salvation. We must be ready to forsake our sins, but God cleans up the mess of our lives. So what Gothard is saying is that we must be ready to repent and forsake our sins, which is a biblical teaching. He does not say we are supposed to clean up our act before coming to Jesus. If Ginger has a reference in any IBLP materials or in the seminar videos or any other things that show this being taught through Gothard and IBLP, I'm open to seeing it. But so far, I've found no teaching at all like this. I believe she is sincere, but badly mistaken here. By saying all of this, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with her beliefs or those of IBLP or Gothard. My beliefs don't matter here at all. I'm only pointing out that spreading false narratives about what is taught by others is wrong. I hope she will remedy this soon. I would love to have a discussion with her or Jill anytime. I have a great deal of respect for them and their family. Again, I think both of them are being honest in what they are saying because they truly believe IBLP taught those things. So if either of them wish to discuss this, I hope they will let me know. There are a lot of things that are just plain lies that came from the interview with Brooke Arnold. We will discuss that next time. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you here then.